Have you ever found yourself puzzled by the paradox that those who are invariably the nicest, the ones who go out of their way to accommodate others, often seem to be caught in the web of life's most intricate challenges? This question isn't just rhetorical. It touches on an observable pattern that many of us witness, yet seldom pause to deeply analyze. The essence of niceness, wrapped in layers of societal expectations and personal aspirations, frequently leaves us on the precipice of an unsettling revelation. Being excessively nice might not be as virtuous or rewarding as we've been led to believe. In today's exploration, we delve into the hidden complexities of being nice and the unseen troubles it unfurls, especially for the individuals themselves. The term nice is deceptively simple, yet beneath its four-letter facade lies a labyrinth of implications, both for personal well-being and for our interactions with others. This journey isn't just about critiquing niceness. It's an invitation to uncover the nuanced reality that governs our relationships and self-perception. Why is it that the nicest among us often find themselves overburdened, underappreciated and paradoxically isolated in their quest to be universally liked? At the heart of this inquiry lies a fundamental truth about human nature and the society we navigate. Niceness, as a societal currency, holds immense value. It smooths interactions, opens doors, and often is seen as a shortcut to building rapport and trust. Yet the economy of niceness is fraught with inflation. The more we invest in being unconditionally nice, the higher the toll it exacts on our authentic selves, leading to an imbalance that can drain our emotional reserves and skew our relationships. But why does this happen? Why does the path of excessive niceness lead to such unforeseen complications? The answer, though complex, hinges on the delicate dance between self-sacrifice and self-neglect, a dance that many of us are unwittingly enrolled in from an early age. This isn't just about saying yes when we want to say no, or the countless times we've prioritized others' needs and comfort over our own. It's about the profound impact these choices have on our psyche our relationships, and our ability to lead genuinely fulfilling lives. Today we're not just scratching the surface, we're digging deeper, beyond the commendable traits of kindness and generosity, to examine the shadow side of niceness. The side that compromises our well-being, clouds our judgment, and ironically, diminishes our ability to genuinely connect with others. This exploration is not an indictment of kindness, Rather, it's a call to redefine what it means to be truly nice, to ourselves first and by extension to those around us. What you're about to gain from this video is not just insight into the pitfalls of being overly nice, but a roadmap to navigating the fine line between genuine kindness and self-compromise. The realization that true niceness doesn't mean erasing boundaries, but rather drawing them wisely. It's about discovering that the most profound acts of kindness start with being kind to oneself, setting the foundation for healthier, more authentic relationships. So if you've ever felt the weight of being too nice, or wondered why those who give the most often end up with the least, you're in the right place. Stick around as we unravel the intricate dance of niceness, challenge its conventional boundaries, and redefine its place in our lives. This is more than an exploration. It's an invitation to a journey towards self-discovery, empowerment, and a more balanced way of interacting with the world. Venturing into the heart of our exploration begins with disentangling the threads of what it genuinely means to be nice. This term, often tossed around in daily conversations, carries weight far beyond its simplistic usage. At its core, niceness is a multifaceted gem reflecting societal expectations, personal values, and the innate human desire to connect. However, 
As we delve deeper, it becomes apparent that the societal portrayal of niceness is a double-edged sword, sharpened by expectations and dulled by the sacrifices it demands. To untangle this, we must differentiate between genuine kindness and the societal mask of niceness. Genuine kindness springs from a place of empathy, compassion, and an authentic desire to contribute positively to someone's life. It's an intrinsic quality, unmeasured and freely given, without the expectation of reciprocity. In contrast, societal niceness often emerges as a role we play, a series of actions performed under the weight of expectation. It's the polite smile we offer when we'd rather express discontent, the yes we utter when our hearts scream no. This form of niceness is transactional, performed in anticipation of social approval, acceptance, or to fulfill the roles we believe we must adhere to in our personal and professional lives. The common perception of niceness as a universally positive trait is deeply ingrained in our societal fabric. From childhood, we are taught that being nice is synonymous with being good. This teaching is not inherently flawed it nurtures the foundational aspects of social cohesion and empathy. However, the reward system built around this concept often fails to acknowledge the complexity of human emotions and the diversity of interpersonal interactions. The societal rewards for niceness, being liked, accepted or considered agreeable, can compel individuals to suppress their genuine feelings, needs and boundaries in favor of maintaining a facade of agreeableness. This dynamic creates an environment where individuals may continuously compromise their authentic selves, leading to a disconnect between their internal experiences and external expressions. Yet, beneath the agreeable smiles and the commendable acts of selflessness, there's a more intricate issue at hand. The relentless pursuit of niceness, especially when it crosses into the realm of self-neglect, poses significant questions about the sustainability of such behavior and its impact on personal well-being. The glorification of self-sacrifice in the name of niceness overlooks the critical importance of self-care and personal boundaries. As a result, individuals who consistently prioritize societal expectations of niceness over their well-being may find themselves on a path of emotional exhaustion and resentment. This dynamic not only undermines the genuine connection and mutual respect foundational to healthy relationships, but also perpetuates a cycle where individuals feel compelled to continue this unsustainable exchange of authenticity for acceptance. This realization beckons a deeper examination of the societal construct of niceness and its implications for personal and collective well-being. It challenges us to confront the uncomfortable truths about the cost of adhering to these expectations and the need for a paradigm shift towards valuing authenticity and genuine kindness. As we navigate this complex terrain, the journey ahead promises not only insights into the inherent contradictions of societal niceness, but also pathways towards cultivating a more authentic and fulfilling way of relating to ourselves and others. The exploration of niceness in its societal and personal dimensions invites us to reconsider the values we champion and the behaviors we reward within our communities and relationships. It beckons a re-evaluation of the ways in which we define and demonstrate kindness, urging a move away from performative gestures and towards a more authentic expression of empathy and compassion. In doing so, we not only enrich our personal lives but also contribute to the creation of a society where individuals are celebrated for their genuine contributions to the well-being of others rather than their adherence to prescribed roles of niceness. This nuanced understanding of niceness and its implications is not merely academic. It's a vital step towards fostering healthier, more authentic relationships. It encourages us to question the roles we play the masks we wear, and the true cost of the societal accolades we seek. As we peel away the layers of societal expectations, we uncover the core of genuine kindness, a quality that does not demand the erasure of self, but rather flourishes in the space where authenticity and empathy intersect. This realization is not an endpoint, but the beginning of a more profound exploration of what it means to be truly nice, to ourselves first, 
and by extension to those around us. To weave the threads of understanding further, let's immerse ourselves in a narrative that mirrors the lived experiences of countless individuals. Picture Alex, a protagonist whose life is a testament to the quintessential definition of niceness. Alex is the person everyone turns to in times of need, the one who never says no, who always lends a hand, and whose presence is synonymous with warmth and support. This reputation for being unfailingly nice is both Alex's pride and, as we'll discover, a profound source of personal turmoil. His journey through the realm of niceness is not unlike a ship sailing in turbulent waters. The struggle begins to surface as the very traits that define his niceness, empathy, generosity, and a deep-seated desire to make others happy become the chains that bind and restrict. The incessant need to meet others' expectations and the fear of disappointing anyone lead him down a path of overcommitment and self-neglect. Despite the outward appearance of happiness and the accolades for being the epitome of kindness, he harbors feelings of unfulfillment and exploitation. The realization that his kindness is often taken for granted and his efforts seen as obligations rather than gestures of goodwill casts a shadow over Alex's perception of niceness. The climax of his story arrives at a moment of acute crisis, a point where the imbalance between giving and receiving, between selflessness and self-preservation, becomes untenable. Faced with yet another demand on his time and energy, a demand that clashes with his own needs, Alex reaches a breaking point. It's a moment fraught with tension, where the fear of letting others down wrestles with the burgeoning awareness of self-worth and the need for self-care, this pivotal moment forces him to confront a painful truth. His relentless pursuit of niceness has come at the cost of his own well-being and happiness. From this crucible of realization, an epiphany emerges, illuminating his understanding of true kindness. This moment of clarity reveals that genuine kindness is not an inexhaustible resource to be dispensed at the expense of one's health and happiness. Instead, it's a quality that flourishes in the balance between giving to others and honoring oneself. He comes to understand that setting boundaries is not an act of selfishness, but a crucial expression of self-respect and self-care. This epiphany marks a turning point in his journey, catalyzing a transformation in how he navigates his relationships and obligations. By prioritizing self-care and learning to say no, he begins to rediscover the joy in helping others, not out of obligation, but from a place of genuine capacity and desire. This story, while fictional, mirrors the realities of many who find themselves trapped in the cycle of performative niceness. It serves as a mirror reflecting our own experiences, inviting us to examine the balance between kindness and self-preservation in our lives. How often have we, like Alex, extended ourselves beyond our limits in the name of niceness? How many times have we silenced our needs, ignored our boundaries, and prioritized others' comfort over our well-being? His journey prompts us to question the sustainability of our actions and the authenticity of our interactions. It encourages us to redefine our understanding of kindness, to recognize that true kindness encompasses self-care and the courage to establish and maintain healthy boundaries. As we reflect on Alex's story, we're invited to engage in a personal audit of our relationship with niceness. This reflection isn't meant to diminish the value of being kind or to discourage acts of generosity. Instead, it's an invitation to cultivate a more balanced approach to niceness, one that acknowledges the importance of self-care and the strength inherent in setting boundaries. By doing so, we not only safeguard our well-being, but also enhance the quality and authenticity of our kindness towards others. His narrative, with its struggles and revelations, serves as a beacon for those navigating the complexities of niceness. 
It underscores the message that true kindness is a balanced act, one that harmonizes the giving of oneself with the preservation of one's integrity and happiness. This story is a call to action urging us to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation where the act of being genuinely nice includes being kind to ourselves. In embracing this balanced approach, we not only enrich our lives but also contribute to a culture of authentic and sustainable kindness. Diving deeper into the intricacies of niceness and its implications, we encounter the psychological landscape shaped by the pursuit of perpetual agreeableness. This terrain, though often glossed over with the veneer of social harmony, harbors deep fissures that affect the mental and emotional well-being of the overly nice. The relentless drive to conform to the archetype of niceness exerts a profound toll on individuals, manifesting in a spectrum of psychological challenges from diminished self-esteem to chronic stress and even burnout. The mental and emotional toll of excessive niceness stems from a chronic misalignment between one's authentic feelings and external behaviors. This dissonance, over time, erodes the foundation of personal integrity, leading to feelings of invisibility and invalidation. The overly nice often find themselves trapped in a cycle of people-pleasing where the validation and approval of others become the barometers of their self-worth. This relentless quest for external affirmation is a precarious scaffold, susceptible to the slightest gust of disapproval or indifference. The resultant psychological strain is multifaceted, manifesting in anxiety over potential conflict, depression stemming from unmet personal needs, and a pervasive sense of being overwhelmed by the demands of others. The irony is palpable. In their quest to be universally liked and to avoid conflict, the overly nice inadvertently sow the seeds of inner turmoil and dissatisfaction. This psychological burden extends its tendrils into the realm of relationship dynamics, where the principle of niceness can significantly skew perceptions and interactions. In relationships where one party consistently prioritizes niceness, an imbalance often emerges, characterized by unequal emotional labor and a lack of reciprocity. This imbalance not only dampens the authenticity of the connection, but can also foster resentment and dependency. For the overly nice individual, their relationships become arenas of constant performance, where the fear of upsetting the status quo or disappointing others shackles their ability to express genuine feelings and needs. Consequently, these relationships may lack depth and authenticity, as they are built on the shaky foundation of suppressed truths and unspoken boundaries. The dynamics become further complicated by the fact that this imbalance often goes unacknowledged, as acknowledging it would necessitate confronting the very conflicts the overly nice seek to avoid. Thus, the cycle perpetuates with genuine intimacy and mutual respect remaining just out of reach. Amidst these personal struggles, the broader societal expectations of niceness loom large, casting long shadows over individual autonomy and authenticity. Society, with its intricate tapestry of norms and values, often elevates niceness to a virtue par excellence, lauding it as the hallmark of good citizenship and moral character. This societal pedestal, however, comes at a cost, it pressures individuals to conform to an idealized image of agreeableness, often at the expense of their genuine emotions and opinions. This pressure is not merely abstract, it manifests in the subtle cues of everyday interactions, the media narratives that glorify selflessness, and the institutional cultures that prioritize harmony over healthy dissent. The cumulative effect of these pressures is a cultural milieu that discourages confrontation and prioritizes surface-level peace over genuine understanding and respect for personal boundaries. This critique of societal pressures is not an indictment of the values that underpin social cohesion, such as empathy and cooperation. Rather, 
it is a call to re-examine the balance between these values and the equally important principles of authenticity and personal integrity. The challenge lies in navigating a social landscape that often equates niceness with virtue, without succumbing to the pitfalls of performative agreeableness. It requires a collective reimagining of what it means to be genuinely nice, a reimagining that embraces the complexity of human emotions, acknowledges the importance of boundaries, and celebrates the courage to be authentic. As we consider the psychological impacts of excessive niceness, the skewed dynamics it introduces into relationships, and the societal pressures that perpetuate this cycle, the call to action becomes clear. It is a call to embrace a more nuanced understanding of kindness, one that honors the self as much as it honors others. This understanding challenges us to question the societal scripts that dictate our interactions and to forge a path toward a more authentic and balanced expression of niceness, one that nurtures our well-being and enriches our relationships with genuine connection and respect. In the quest to dissect the nuances of niceness, a journey through the annals of philosophy unveils centuries-old wisdom that remains strikingly relevant today. The philosophical discourse on niceness, particularly as it intersects with self-sacrifice and altruism, is rich and varied, offering insights that challenge and complement our contemporary understanding. At the heart of these discussions lies the ancient philosophy of Aristotle, who introduced the concept of the golden mean, a principle advocating for a virtuous middle ground between two extremes. Aristotle's ethos suggests that virtue lies not in excess or deficiency, but in balance. This principle, when applied to niceness, prompts a reconsideration of our tendencies towards excessive selflessness or self-negation in the name of being agreeable. Aristotle's philosophy encourages us to seek a balance where kindness does not bleed into self-erasure, but is instead a measured expression that respects both our well-being and that of others. His insights beckon us to navigate the complex terrain of human interactions with a compass calibrated towards ethical balance, fostering a form of niceness that harmonizes with personal integrity. Transitioning from the ancient to the modern, the philosophical landscape shifts to explore the terrain of authenticity, boundaries and the ethics of care. In this context, the work of Jean-Paul Sartre, an existentialist philosopher, challenges us to confront the essence of authenticity in our actions and relationships. Sartre's philosophy, with its emphasis on existential freedom and individual responsibility, interrogates the authenticity behind societal niceness. He posits that in every action we are fully responsible for our choices and the person we choose to become. This existential autonomy places us at the crossroads of being for ourselves and being for others, where niceness, if unexamined, can become a bad faith action, a denial of our authentic being in favor of societal approval. Sartre's exploration invites us to consider whether our niceness is a genuine expression of our freedom and responsibility or a retreat into the safety of social conformity. The philosophical inquiry into niceness also confronts the moral quandaries surrounding exploitation and the ethics of allowing oneself to be taken advantage of. Here, the Kantian perspective on self-respect and autonomy provides a critical lens through which to examine the implications of excessive niceness. Immanuel Kant's ethical framework, centered on the inherent dignity and worth of the individual, categorically opposes the exploitation of oneself or others as means to an end. From this viewpoint, excessive niceness, especially when it encroaches upon one's autonomy and self-respect, is ethically untenable. Kant's philosophy underscores the importance of asserting one's moral agency and respecting one's boundaries as a duty not just to oneself, but to the moral order. This perspective illuminates the ethical dimensions of niceness, 
challenging us to uphold our dignity and autonomy even as we navigate the complexities of social interactions and altruistic impulses. The philosophical debates on niceness, altruism and self-preservation converge in a dynamic discourse that seeks to reconcile the seemingly conflicting demands of kindness towards others and the imperative of self-care. This dialogue engages with a spectrum of philosophical thought from the Stoics' advocacy for self-mastery and internal peace to the utilitarian calculus of maximizing overall happiness. The crux of this debate hinges on finding a sustainable equilibrium between altruistic endeavors and the preservation of one's well-being. The challenge, as articulated by contemporary philosophers and ethicists, lies in cultivating a form of niceness that neither exhausts the self nor neglects the other. This philosophical exploration encourages a re-evaluation of our motivations and practices, guiding us towards a form of niceness that is both ethically informed and personally sustainable. In this rich tapestry of philosophical thought, from Aristotle's golden mean to the existentialist calls for authenticity and the ethical imperatives of self-respect, the concept of niceness is reframed and revitalized. These philosophical perspectives invite us to engage with niceness not as a societal mandate to be unconditionally agreeable, but as a nuanced, ethically grounded and balanced approach to living. They challenge us to reconceptualize niceness in a way that honors our autonomy, respects our boundaries, and embraces the genuine care for others as an extension of our care for ourselves. Through this philosophical lens, niceness emerges not as a weakness or a liability, but as a virtue that, when rightly understood and practiced, enriches our lives and the lives of those around us. As we navigate through the complex landscape of niceness, it becomes evident that the path towards healthier interactions and genuine connections lies in the establishment of clear boundaries, the cultivation of authentic kindness, and a commitment to personal growth. These elements are not just solutions to the pitfalls of excessive niceness, but are foundational pillars for building a life of integrity, respect, and true well-being. Setting boundaries is paramount to maintaining healthy relationships and preserving one's sense of self. Boundaries act as the framework within which we can operate with freedom and personal integrity. They enable us to define our limits and communicate our needs effectively, thereby preventing the resentment and burnout that often accompany unchecked niceness. Establishing boundaries is an act of self-respect and a declaration of our worth. It requires clarity about what we are willing to accept in our interactions with others and the courage to uphold these standards even in the face of opposition or disappointment. The process of setting boundaries is inherently personal and can vary significantly from one individual to another. It involves a deep understanding of one's values, needs and limits and the assertiveness to communicate these aspects clearly and respectfully. In doing so, we not only protect our well-being but also foster relationships based on mutual respect and understanding, where kindness flows freely, unmarred by obligation or sacrifice. The journey towards authentic kindness necessitates a discernment between acts of niceness born out of societal expectation and those that stem from a genuine desire to connect and contribute positively to others' lives. Authentic kindness is characterized by its spontaneity, sincerity, and the absence of ulterior motives. It is kindness that seeks no reward, expects no recognition, and is guided by an inner compass of compassion and empathy. Cultivating this form of kindness requires an introspective journey to reconnect with our innate capacity for empathy and compassion, unshackled by the need for approval or acceptance. It involves a conscious decision to engage with the world from a place of authenticity, where our actions are reflections of our true selves and our intentions are aligned with our core values. This form of kindness enriches our interactions, deepening our connections with others in meaningful and fulfilling ways. 
It transforms our relationships, making them vessels for mutual growth and understanding rather than arenas for performative niceness. Personal growth emerges as a natural progression from the establishment of boundaries and the practice of authentic kindness. It encompasses the development of assertiveness, the cultivation of authenticity, and the relentless pursuit of self-awareness. Assertiveness allows us to express our thoughts, feelings, and needs openly and respectfully without encroaching on the rights of others. It is a vital skill in navigating the complexities of human relationships, ensuring that our voices are heard and our boundaries respected. Authenticity, on the other hand, demands that we live in alignment with our true selves, embracing our strengths, acknowledging our weaknesses, and rejecting the masks of conformity that society often imposes. This commitment to authenticity not only fosters personal integrity but also serves as a beacon for others, inspiring them to embrace their true selves. Finally, the journey of personal growth is fueled by self-awareness, the continual process of reflecting on our thoughts, emotions and behaviors, and understanding how they shape our interactions with the world. Self-awareness enables us to recognize the patterns that govern our actions, including those that lead to excessive niceness, and to consciously choose a different path, one that honors our well-being and fosters genuine connections. The path towards overcoming the pitfalls of excessive niceness is paved with the principles of setting boundaries, practicing authentic kindness, and pursuing personal growth. These principles serve not only as antidotes to the challenges of niceness, but also as guiding lights towards a life of authenticity, integrity, and fulfilling relationships. By embracing these solutions, we embark on a journey of transformation, where each step forward is a step towards a more genuine, balanced, and enriching way of being. This journey is not without its challenges, but the rewards a life lived with authenticity, respect, and genuine connection are immeasurably worth the effort. Before we close this video, let's pause and reflect on the journey we've embarked upon together. We ventured into the intricate world of niceness, guided by the story of Alex, a protagonist emblematic of the struggles faced by those who carry the weight of being perpetually nice. Alex's narrative unfolded from the initial allure of being the go-to person for everyone, through the ensuing challenges of feeling unappreciated and overextended to the pivotal realization that true kindness involves a balance between caring for others and oneself. This epiphany was not just a turning point for Alex, but a beacon for us all, illuminating the path to healthier interactions and more authentic connections. The insights gleaned from Alex's story, coupled with the wisdom of philosophical perspectives, reveal a profound truth. Excessive niceness, untempered by self-respect and boundaries, can lead to a life of dissatisfaction and invisibility. We've seen how the psychological toll of this imbalance can affect our well-being, how it can distort the dynamics of our relationships, and how societal pressures often exacerbate the issue. Yet, in the rich tapestry of discussions on boundaries, authenticity, and personal growth, we find not only solutions to these challenges, but also an invitation to a more fulfilling way of life. Now I turn to you, the viewers. Your experiences, your struggles, and your victories in navigating the complexities of niceness are invaluable. I encourage you to share your stories in the comments below. How have you confronted the challenges of being too nice? What steps are you taking to set healthy boundaries, to cultivate authentic kindness, and to embark on a journey of personal growth? Your reflections can shine a light for others who find themselves in the shadows of excessive niceness, offering hope and guidance. As you ponder your contributions to this dialogue, remember that the journey towards balancing kindness with self-care is ongoing. It's a path marked by continuous learning 
self-reflection, and most importantly, self-compassion. Each step you take towards asserting your boundaries, each moment you choose authentic kindness over performative niceness, you not only reclaim a piece of yourself, but also set a precedent for healthier, more genuine interactions. Let this exploration be a catalyst for change in your life. Let the story of Alex, the philosophical insights, and the discussions on boundaries and authenticity inspire you to live with intention and integrity. You have the power to transform your relationships, to nurture your well-being, and to cultivate a life of genuine kindness and respect. Remember, being nice doesn't mean you have to lose yourself in the process. On the contrary, it's in finding the balance that you truly enrich not only your life, but also the lives of those around you.